Carrie. In Syria, government and rebel troops are fighting over a historic Christian village near Damascus. Malula is home to two of the oldest surviving monasteries in that country. It's also known as one of the few places in the world where residents still speak Aramaic, the language of Jesus. Witnesses say Islamic rebels damaged churches and attacked homes, forcing hundreds of residents to flee. Meanwhile, Christians in Damascus mourn the deaths of three men who died trying to escape the town. Well, Dr. Andrew Parasaliti is editor and founder of AlMonitor.com. That's a Middle Eastern news site. And he recently spoke with Gary Lane about the significance of the town of Malula and why Christians fear for their future. Now, tell us a little bit about this historic uh, village and the significance of it. Well, it is a very significant village, uh, Gary. It is uh, considered to be one of the oldest Christian villages in the world and the oldest one in Syria. It is home to two very important uh, monasteries called Takwa and Sarkis, and the community there speaks Aramaic. That's the language of Jesus Christ, and it's one of the few places, if not the only place, in the Western world where that language is still spoken. Do you think both sides of the Civil War could be using this town to manipulate public opinion? I think so, and I think the, the overall situation here is one of great tragedy. It's tragedy for Syria, and it's a tragedy for the Christian community of Syria. The, the non-Islamist rebels have tried to show that they are trying to respect uh, the key sites uh, and heritage sites in the monasteries of Malula. Of course, the regime has responded uh, to attacks there, and the bottom line is that Malula is uh, paying a price for the war in Syria. Well, we We've heard some reports that uh, they've actually, these fighters, al-Nusra fighters, have occupied a church. Uh, they've destroyed part of it, even killed Christians. What are you hearing on that? I haven't heard yet any confirmation of, of, of casualties or, or destruction, but I have seen the reports, and there is video footage of them entering uh, the Tarkis Monastery, uh, and they've actually gotten some of the nuns uh, who are there, there's a nunnery there, uh, to say that they're being treated well. Again, as you mentioned at the beginning, this is a public relations uh, issue for the rebels because they know this looks very bad to the West as the Congress uh, debates uh, authorization for the use of force in Syria against the regime. Many analysts tend to believe that uh, as you weaken the regime, you also strengthen radical Islamists who are fighting the regime, who will have their say and are having their say in the so-called liberated areas of Syria uh, in the north and elsewhere, where they're imposing Islamic uh, rule. Many fear what will happen in Syria will be a replay of what happened in Iraq. And I'm sure, Gary, uh, your viewers know well that the, the Christian community of Iraq, which also, like the Christian community in Syria, has played such an important role uh, in the heritage and culture and, and the, the perceptions of tolerance in those countries, uh, had to flee because they were targeted by radical Islamists as well after Saddam Hussein was deposed. We need to think of a way, whatever we do in Syria, to bring this war to a close. Over 100,000 Syrians have died in this war. Over 2 million are refugees. Uh, every day that it goes on, uh, more people suffer, and the Christian community is, is suffering along with the rest of Syria. Okay, Dr. Andrew Parasoliti, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Gary, for having me.